Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this particular session on the clinical sign of the day. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator on An Academy. So before starting the session, let me just give you some updates from An Academy. An Academy has come up with two important batch courses for the FMG students and another important batch course is for next 2022. And those students who want to get subscribed to these batch courses, you can use my code that is LiveMed wherein you will get 10% additional discount on your subscription. And these are the grantor series which are going on the platform of an academy for the NEET PG students. And this is the amazing offer from an academy that is if you take 24 months subscription you will get 4 months subscription free and if you take 12 months subscription you will get 2 months subscription free. So to get subscribed to these batch courses you can use my code that is LiveMed wherein you will get an additional 10% discount. So having said this, let me just discuss the clinical sign of the day. So the question is, which of the following drug is contraindicated in this condition? Right, so let me just show you the video. Yes. Right, so you can observe that involuntary movements. The options are bromocryptin, haloperidol, intrathecal baclofen, and tetrabenazine. So, first of all, you should be able to identify what exactly is that particular disorder. So, that abnormal movement, can anyone guess? Right, so that particular abnormal movement, it is hemibalismus. Right, it is hemibalismus. So, where exactly is the site of lesion for the development of this hemibalismus? That is at the subthalamic nucleus. Now, if you have hemibalismus, you should not give dopaminergic drugs, which is the dopaminergic drug or which is the dopamine agonist, that is the bromocryptin. So, please remember, bromocryptin should not be given in these patients with the hemibalismus. You can give anti-dopaminergic drugs. Actually, the treatment for hemibalismus is you need to treat the underlying cause. Whatever might be the cause, it could be infection, it could be neoplasm, it could be amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or it could be even hyperglycemia. And in spite of treating the underlying cause, if the involuntary movement is still present, then you need to give anti-dopaminergic drugs, but not the dopaminergic drugs. And apart from the anti-dopaminergic drugs, we can give intrathecal baclofen for the treatment of hemibalismus, and we can also give tetrabenazine for the treatment of hemibalismus. Having said this, so if you take the difference between the hemibalismus and as well as phoria, both of them, they look similar. Both of them are the involuntary movements. Then what is the difference? In case of hemibalismus, the involuntary movement is mainly present in the proximal limb. Whereas in chorea, that involuntary abnormal movement is present in the distal part of the limb. This is a very important difference between the hemibalismus and as well as the chorea. Now, if you see the drugs which I have given you in the options, bromocryptin, it is a dopamine agonist used in the treatment of prolactinoma. Haloperidol, it is a typical antipsychotic used in the treatment of schizophrenia and it is also anti-dopaminergic drug. And intrathecal baclofen, it is the skeletal muscle relaxant used in the treatment of cerebral palsy and multiple sclerosis and can also be given in the treatment of your hemibalismus. Coming to the tetrabenazine, tetrabenazine it is used in many of the involuntary movement conditions like Huntington's chorea, Tourette syndrome, Tardif dyskinesia and as well as the hemibalismus. So these are all the clinical conditions where we use this tetrabenazine. Now, yes, if you take the involuntary movements related to your basal ganglia, athetosis is one of the involuntary movement and the site of pathology for the development of athetosis is globus pallidus. Hemibalismus, that is what I have shown you. For the development of hemibalismus, the site of pathology is at the subthalamic nucleus. Chorea is an involuntary movement and for the development of chorea, the site of pathology is either caudate nucleus and putamen. And Parkinson's disease, wherein you will have involuntary movement in the form of tremors and the site of pathology is at the substantia nigra. 
Now, having said this, right, this is the homework of the day. Tourette syndrome is associated with the options are coprophagia, coprolalia, copropraxia, coprophilia, right? So go through what exactly is Tourette syndrome and what will be the feature in Tourette syndrome. You just answer in the comment box. I will revert it to you, right? And if you have liked this particular video, comment on our video and just press the like button and do share the video with your friends, which will be helpful for the students appearing for NEET BG and as well as FMG exam. Thank you very much.